you very much. Uh, hi to everyone. I am, my name is uh, Adrián Riquelme. I come from the University of Alicante in Spain, and I am here to present you just a, a small experience that we have a small idea just to play. But uh, we found this uh, really interesting uh, for this topic. So. The title of this presentation is uh, the reconstruction of earth fissures from earth, earth fissures using 3D models from videos downloaded from YouTube. Uh, I am Adrián Riquelme and my other colleagues are Roberto Tomás, José Luis Pastor, Miguel Cano, and two other uh, colleagues from the University of Arizona. In this presentation, um, the contents are for different points. I will start from a small introduction, then I will continue showing you the methods that we used, then the results, and we will end with uh, small conclusions. Okay, so the first thing that I want you to do is to take your phone and open the QR reader. So please, let's take a few seconds, pick up your phone, Open the QR reader, and then I'm going to jump. I decided this last night. I'm going to jump here, and I want you to scan this QR, please. I would like to take your photo because you are all with a phone like this. <laughs> Is okay. Okay, now uh, you are opening a website. Sketchfab is a repository of 3D models, and uh, let it load. It will take uh, its time because it's a heavy model. But this is our result. Now I am coming back to the start of the presentation, and we will arrive here in a few minutes. Okay. So now the model is opening. You are consuming the bandwidth. So, how this started? One day we found this video on, on YouTube. This video was recorded by the other colleagues because after this work we contacted with them from the University of Arizona. And we found uh, this video, which is uh, an RPAS, this Remotely Pilot Aircraft System, a drone, that uh, recorded a flight of an, earth, of an earth fissure in Arizona. This video was recorded in 4K, very good quality, and they performed a common flight just to recognize the earth fissure. But the thing is that I thought, okay, I am used to work with remote sensing techniques. Actually, in this symposium, uh, we all are talking about uh, remote sensing techniques, but most of them are INSAR sometimes LiDAR, and a little bit of structure from motion. And that's good, because uh, INSAR and LiDAR can provide a, a type of data sets, and this provides a different data set. But this will be of interest of those people who, will who want to study Earth fissures. Okay? Here we will see something that you cannot do this with INSAR, obviously. Okay, so we found this video and I thought, oh, this is a very nice earth fissure. This is uh, an earth fissure located in Arizona, here in the southeast of the USA. It's a one mile long earth fissure that was discovered uh, in 2016. Okay, the, the researchers from the University of Arizona identified it and are studying it. So this earth fissure, as I said, was discovered in 2016, but uh, it has been growing up in terms of length, in terms of width, and in terms of depth. Okay, More or less, in 2017, it was the date when uh, this video aforementioned was recorded, the depth of the earth fissure when it was discovered was close to nine meters, one mile long, and from the top with 
more or less one meter, two meters, depending on the point. So it's a very interesting earth fissure for those people who are studying the subsidence effects. This, uh, in this uh, picture, you can see the four different captures that uh, we obtained from the Google Earth, just uh, moving on the chronology of the images. And we can observe that, yeah, it is uh, being more and more uh, with on from the top. And interestingly, this earth fissure, uh, this, the earth, the materials are sands, seals, and a little bit of gravels. You can find a bedrock 300 meters under the surface. So this is a quaternary deposit. And uh, the walls are very steep. So from one moment to the other, the depth is being reduced because it is being fulfilled of the erosion of the deposits of the walls. Okay, so the, the fissure is, uh, is being uh, filled. So, structure from motion is a technique to reconstruct 3D models. The only instrument, instrument that we need is a camera. But we, if you want to do uh, the things in a serious way, you need more information, topographical information, and so on. So the basis of the structure from motion is that to reconstruct, for instance, this uh, room, what I need is to take many photos, different images. And the most important thing is that the images have a very good, a very high overlap between images and the most important is that to take the photos, I do not have to pivotate, rotate like this. What I have to do is to take one photo, have a step, another photo, another step. So all the photos have a high overlap. So when I saw this video, I realized that, yeah, the drone was moving, was flighting. And the video, if I extract the frames, I will have a very good overlap. So we said, okay, let's try, why not? So, uh, with uh, J Downloader, uh, I downloaded the video from YouTube because from YouTube you can download everything, obviously. And we loaded the, the video in MATLAB and we extracted the frames. So, as it is a 60 frames per second 4K video, I had millions of frames. So, we had to select to uh, sub subsample the number of uh, frames that we have and then we loaded those frames into the, the software. This is a GSOF Metashape. There are other softwares to reconstruct uh, structure from motion models. But uh, the first thing that we have to do with this software is to align the photos. Only with the frames, without the coordinates of the, of the photos, this software is able, this is common in the structure from motion process, but this software can reconstruct the positions of the cameras, the orientations also. So each uh, yellow square is a frame. And as you can see, it was able to reconstruct the path of the flight. And this is the, oh, oh, this is the, the model, okay? So, as you can imagine, only with the photos, I cannot do something serious because I, I am missing the information of the scale and the orientation. So what we did, what we did was to go, uh, go to Google Earth, locate some bushes or some points, reference points, and we measured the distances. And therefore, we inserted the geometrical information inside the reconstruction. So we can somehow uh, correct the secondary distortions of the of the cameras of the lens and also uh, some secondary parameters of the bundle adjustment and the result would provide us a one-to-one -one scale model it wouldn't be orientated to do that i would need more information but for our purposes which we are playing were enough so as you can see, we located some uh, specific points. So from this point to this point and to other point, we just measured the distance and we inserted those distances. Well, now please take your phone and watch the result. 
what you will look. Maybe is, is it loaded properly? Good. So please uh, zoom in, zoom out with the two fingers, move right, left, and so on. And the most interesting thing for us is that with this model, you can measure things and we you can also extract sections, cross sections, as many as you want. And you can also generate a, a digital elevation model with errors. Actually, uh, maybe some of you may be wondering, okay, but please tell me the bundle error, the error of the reconstruction. It was close to one centimeter, but because we only used three ground control points. Okay, that's a uh, tricky part. And, and therefore, you can observe the shape and the geometry and also somehow the geomorphology of the earth fissure only with a video from YouTube. We found that really interesting. And the people from the University of Arizona, uh, our colleagues, liked all the, uh, this really much. Okay, so what can we do with that model? You can download that model on your computer. You can download the 3D model. You can subsample. Uh, that's a mesh, a textured mesh, but you got a uh, subsample to a 3D print cloud. You can also print that feature that uh, on a on a 3D printer. And we were interested in knowing the geometry, so we extracted these cross sections. Okay, you can extract as much as you want, as many as you want. Sorry. And uh, just for to show you, look at this red section. Here you have the, the scale. So the thing is that this red cross section provided us information about the depth, the width, this, uh, the angle of the stepped walls, and also to have an idea of how this fissure was being filled. Because if you reconstruct this fissure a long time, you can also monitorize the way it is being opened or being eroded the, the walls and being filled. Interestingly, here we could measure the depth, which was at this point four meters, the width at the top, which was more or less two meters from the top. It's a very wide uh, fissure. And in the bottom, close to 1.3 meters. So, to conclude this short presentation, using the structure from motion technique, we saw, we demonstrated that uh, in order to study earth fissures, this is a very cost effective because we can also uh, even geo reference the 3D model also using a common GPS, inserting maybe 20 ground control points, we can insert targets on the field and then to perform a very good reconstruction and also reliable. But as always, it depends on the precision that you want to get. Secondly, using the uh, RPAS, we could inspect the upper part and also the inner part of the earth fissure because the drone started the flight from the inside. If you want to do this with a ground-based laser scanner, you will get difficulties. But it also depends on the type of instrument that you want to use. If you want to use a big one, uh, it's a very heavy one and it's unsafe to come inside the air fissure and to put the, the tripod and so on. But nowadays it is true that you can use BLK 360, 360 and others, very light and you can go inside press the button and it will scan everything. But this is, uh, I think, cheaper and a very good complement to that in technique and instrument. Thirdly, using this uh, method, we could quantify the geomorphologi geomorphological changes that the fissure was showing a long time. And finally, as I said, this is a structure from motion is not a standalone technique. As for me, in my opinion, it is a very uh, good and excellent technique uh, to be used as a complement to others. So 
here. Uh, I don't want to finish without uh, acknowledging my my colleagues and also the Resimaco project who funded strongly this, and also the Reservoir project. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you for Arduino uh, and Rikil. A uh, very good presentation and very interesting video. Mm -hmm. Any questions for Arian? Jin. Did you need some kind of vertical matrix? No, only horizontal. This way. The ground control points that, that, uh, that I could got get were from the surface. Actually, what you need to, to, to do is to, in the, in the 3D reconstruction, is to insert real dimensions or coordinates. And all the, the process itself will correct all the orientation of the cameras and the lens distortions and so on. So you don't need to perform a 3D base of the ground contour points. Any question? Thank you for your presentation. Um, I can see the benefit of this in areas that are highly unvegetated and don't, you can see the bare ground or bare earth relatively easily, but what would be the challenges that the structure for motion would face in a very vegetated environment? That's a mess. <laughs> 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 um, for me, vegetation is my, um, my enemy. Every time you have <laughs> vegetation, you get, uh, strange things that you cannot reconstruct. Vegetation is always noise. That's the reason why uh, all people who work with LiDAR and mm, 3D point clouds and so on, we always use uh, some tools like Canupo and other filters to remove vegetation. So vegetation is the first thing to remove. In this case, if you want to do this, for example, in the Galapagos Island, it's uh, everything green, it, it's you cannot do that. It's very difficult. You have to apply this method in a very um, particular and detailed area. And in this case, we just have some bushes, okay? But, and you can also apply some masks to remove the bushes, but uh, also here you will find a problem because of the erosion of the earth and and so on. So somehow the vegetation is a, for me, is like a, an error, noise, it will be there. Okay, it's okay, but then after that, I will remove it. Never use that as a reference, obviously. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, uh, so we uh, thanks for Ariane's presentation and uh, thanks for everyone to join this session and uh, we almost closed the session on time. Thank you, thank you very much.